Okay, welcome back to the second of our tanks in detail video. Uh, this is just to go along with the modelling series that I'm doing for uh, for beginners to try and show some of the basic uh, armour building techniques. And this just fleshes out a bit of a history uh, around uh, one of the subjects that we have been doing recently. And for this one, it's the uh, Sturmgeschütz 4, also known as the Stug 4. So uh, the Sturmgeschütz, which is abbreviated to Stug, uh, which means assault gun in German, uh, was a series of armoured vehicles used by the Germans during the Second World War. Uh, and it pr primarily consisted of the Stug 3 and the Stug 4. Uh, the more common of the two was the Stug 3, and this was built on the Panzer III chassis. And then the Sturmgeschütz 4 came about due to Krupp, which is one of the manufacturers, offering to supply an assault gun, but Krupp did not build any Panzerkampfwagen 3s, so they didn't have the Panzerkampfwagen 3 chassis. They only built Panzerkampfwagen 4s. So with that chassis, uh, they combined a modified Sturmgeschütz 3 superstructure and created the Stug 4. Uh, so the Stug 4 was based on the Panzer 4, utilising the chassis from the Panzer 4 Orfs H. Uh, Orfs means variant it's uh, the panzer 4h so this panzer 4h uh, chassis was married with the stug 3 off g uh, superstructure and then a box compartment was added on the front left side for the driver and then this hybrid construction meant that production could actually be set up quite fast because they didn't have to retool certain things they had it all there and interestingly the actual combat weight of the stug 4 was 23,000 kilograms, uh, and that was actually lighter than the Stug 3, which weighed 23,900 kilograms. Uh, and in the Stug 4, there was a, there was a four-man crew in the vehicle, and the commander had a cupola with vision blocks, giving good 360-degree field of view uh, when the hatch was closed. And the frontal armour was around 80 millimetres thick uh, at its thickest part. And that, that was, it, it then went down from there around the vehicle. So this was all done to actually house the um, 7.5 centimetre gun, and this is the STUK 40 L48 gun. Initially, there was no machine gun added, but uh, after it was it, after it had been used in combat a few times, it, the feedback was that they required a, a close support uh, weapon. So a shield was put on top of the vehicle, and um, an MG34 was fitted to that. Uh, just in front of the loader's hatch. So the production of the Stug 4 spanned um, two years and a bit, basically, two and a half years, roughly, and it, it ran from December 1943 to May 1945, uh, with a total of 1,108 being manufactured. Uh, 31 vehicles were produced by converting damaged Panzer 4s as well. Now, the Ordnance Department actually called this the SDKFZ 167, uh, but interestingly, Tamiya on this boxing uh, are actually calling this the SDKFZ-164, which is completely wrong. And from what I could tell, didn't actually marry up with any vehicle. All of the Stug 4 vehicles were standardised and there was not really any variants of the Stug 4. But some vehicles did vary by, some had Zimmerit uh, paste added, uh, some had the MG34 on the roof... And also some had the spaced armour running along the side, which is known as Schwarzen. All of those things were just added when available. Uh, the Zimmerit was obviously added through the beginning of December 1943 into the spring of 1944 when it was abandoned. So any after that didn't have Zimmerit. But none of those were applied to variants. They, they were all the Sturmgeschütz 4. Uh, and the Stug 4 was used in the same role as the Stug 3 and uh, was actually there just to make up the numbers. So it was used exactly the same as the Stug 3 and mixed in as well. Uh, it mainly saw service on the Eastern Front uh, and also the defence of Germany. Uh, some were sent down to Italy as well, and vehicles were being re used right through to the end of the war in 1945, uh, and even there was, there was a few Stugfalls in the defence of Berlin during the Battle of Berlin. Uh, you see some wrecks there. Uh, in and in and around Germany as as they're fighting back towards Berlin. Uh, now, the camouflage marking, markings would have mainly been either overall Dunkelgelb, which is the, the dark yellow, or then we would have had a three-tone camouflage of the Dunkelgelb, Rotbraun and Dunkelgrün, which is the dark yellow, red-brown and the dark green. Uh, and then these would have followed suit with the rest of the German vehicle production at the time. So early on, uh, when you've got the Zimmerit being added uh, from the 43 to 44 mark, you'd be finding that it was a kind of a loose pattern. So it'd be a, a base of uh, Dunkelgelb and then the red brown and the dark green would have been then either applied in the factory in a kind of loose pattern or it would have been applied in the field and airbrushed on 
And then later on, when things changed and the factories were applying the camouflage, this would then have applied to the Stug as well, uh, where they would have had quite a hard edge camouflage, again, over the dark yellow base with the red brown and the red green. You could have also had the ambush pattern uh, showing up as well, uh, especially as we were getting into the Ardennes offensive in the beginning of 1945. So there's a lot to choose from, to be honest, which makes it quite an interesting vehicle. Uh, So just to finish off, we've got some specifications. So uh, the dimensions, this is uh, length, width and height. So we've got a length of 4.95 metres with a width of 2.95 metres and a height of 2.16 metres. The armament, as we said before, was a 75mm STUK 40L48 gun uh, with a 7.9mm MG34 uh, on the roof as well. Uh, the armour ran from uh, 9mm thick up to 80mm thick on the front of the vehicle. There was a crew of four with a driver, commander, gunner and loader. The engine was the Maybach HL120 TRM V12 water-cooled gasoline engine. And it could reach a top speed of around 40 kilometres per hour or 25 miles per hour. And the range in consumption was, was around 200 kilometres or 130 miles. And the total production run was 1,108 with an extra 31, which were conversions from uh, wrecked Panzer IV holes. So hopefully that's of interest and uh, everyone's carrying along with the series. I've got a link at the end of the video. One, one of the videos there has got the playlist for the models that are going along with this the model builds and we've got the end of the stug 4 coming up shortly so that will complete that uh, that little part of the series they're weekly videos and um, these go alongside that with a little bit of information so hope everyone's enjoying that if you want to support the channel there's a couple links below in the description where you can do that if you haven't already please consider subscribing to the channel if you like the video please give it a like it helps with all of the youtube analytics side of things Uh, Any comments, let me know down below. May have made the odd mistake uh, in the research, so uh, pop them down below and I can always update it in the description. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.